Dr. Annie Bukacek is a board-certified internal medicine physician and sole proprietor of her medical practice in Kalispell named Hosanna Healthcare. She has been practicing medicine for over 30 years, most of those years in Montana. She got her medical degree from the University of Illinois in Chicago, did her internship and residency in internal medicine at Oregon Health Sciences University. Dr. Annie is a council member and fellow of the American College of Physicians, Montana chapter, and in 2019 won the ACP Laureate Award for commitment to excellence in medical care, as well as service to their community and the ACP. She is a member of the Montana Medical Association Legislative Committee. She was voted best family physician in the Flathead County 2012 and 2019, and she is a member of the Flathead County Board of Health. Dr. Annie has been president of the Montana Pro-Life Coalition since 2008 and is a member of the board of directors of the Montana Shooting Sports Association, MSSA. She is a mother of five and a grandmother of 12. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Annie Bukacek. Thank you, Pastor. Sure appreciate the introduction and and I'm going to more or less read what I have in my presentation so that I can, I told him I was going to limit commentary and it'll make it faster if I read it. So first I'm going to give some background on the coronavirus. In December 2019, a novel coronavirus was identified in Wuhan, China. January 2020, cases of, of related acute respiratory disease were identified internationally in travelers from China. January 30th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared an international health emergency in order to support health efforts targeted at limiting further transmission. According to a New York Times report yesterday, 800 people have died from the novel coronavirus. Of the 12 million people in Wuhan, China, that is a small percent, 0.006.6% in the city where the virus originated. And we have been given no information as to the preceding health status of those who allegedly died from the virus. In other words, they, many of them, if not most, could have had underlying severe illnesses to begin with. We don't know that. Um, additional facts about the virus to keep in mind. The symptoms of coronavirus are the same as influenza virus, so travel history to Wuhan, China is the key feature to glean from the clinical history. Without that specific travel history or contact with somebody that had that history, you're extremely unlikely to become infected. Another fact, the common cold is caused by a variation of coronavirus 25 to 35% of the time. And the coronavirus we test here at KRMC and at most local hospitals is not the same as the one getting media attention. Testing is done at the Center for Disease Control. In addition to a low per capita death rate in China, the risk for pandemic of this coronavirus in the USA is very low, according to the American College of Physicians infectious disease spokesperson. Among people in the flathead, how many contacts do we have with people who have been in China within the last month? My son-in-law went there a year ago and one of my patients two years ago and that's it. And I suspect your experience about travel to China is similar. If the risk is very low in the USA as a whole, it must be really low in the flathead. The risk of severe respiratory illness from influenza or other viruses remains far greater than risk of contacting the coronavirus from China. So uh, let's, let's look at the 10-year history of pandemic sensationalism. 2008-2009, H1N1, less than 20,000 cases per year with low mortality. H1N1 was mandated into vaccines thereafter. 2015, Ebola, it, uh, it, a little commentary here. I think H1N1 sounded too mild. It sounds really mild and the symptoms were the same as the flu so people didn't make a real big deal out of it. Didn't seem to get too many people's attention so they came up with Ebola. 
and the media described horrifying internal and external hemorrhage and ruptured intestines. Uh, despite widespread concern and people were walking around with gloves and hazmat suits, no cases developed in the USA. To date, there are no licensed vaccines, but there are many candidate vaccines that have been given to people in Africa. Okay, 2015, 2016, the Zika virus, uh, there were 5,000 cases in the United States, none from local transmission, all from travel, especially to the Caribbean. Uh, risk was limited to babies in the womb who might um, be born with golf ball size head. Again, sensational. We know how much our government cares about our unborn. It's said in the US, there were 15 states where people had the Zika virus. And in those 15 US states, 0.3% of pregnancies in those states were possibly connected with adversely affected babies. And with possibly, that could be like tomorrow, possibly the sun won't rise. So possibly can also mean none at all. Okay, so Zika virus vaccines were developed and have been used on people in endemic areas at least through 2019. That's probably gonna be ongoing. So 2019, 2020, coronavirus, there's been no local US transmission at this point. Only people who have been in Wuhan, China, or have, have gotten it. There is a worldwide effort at this point to develop vaccines and antiviral medications. All right, I wanna talk a little bit about sensationalism. There are two general categories of sensationalism. In the mainstream media, scare tactics regarding the virus itself that leads to vaccine development and fear leading to people turning to government and the vaccine industry to save them. Number two, in the alternative media, alternate media, scare tactics regarding the virus itself, plus Bill Gates and other New World Order operatives creating slash patenting the virus and planning to use it against us in germ warfare. The same operatives developing vaccines and planning to quarantine citizens into FEMA camps. So those are the two categories and they're both largely based on, on fear mongering. And we know from the Bible, and we especially, everybody at Liberty Fellowship knows that fear of man and man's institutions never come from God, amen? So let's look at the outcomes. None of the pandemics sensationalized in the media in this country have come close to the catastrophic forecasts made. Ebola and Zika never took root in the US, and coronavirus is unlikely to be significant here. Operatives have not, in the U.S., unleashed the patented viruses as germ warfare. Though I have no doubt FEMA camps with evil designs exist, U.S. citizens haven't yet been forced into them under the guise of quarantine after 10 years of sensationalizing these viruses. What has been accomplished by the sensationalism? The billion dollar vaccine industry has developed multiple vaccines at the behest of government with questionable oversight and value that have been given to people, may I say experimented on people in Africa, South America, and now Asia. The United Nations World Health Organization only hits the right flu virus five to 10% of the time in the flu vaccines. The previous shingles virus, now it's been updated, but the previous one only got it right 50% of the time and was made with aborted baby cells. Chickenpox and measles vaccines that are mandated for school children are made with aborted baby cells. During the 2012 Flathead County, what I call pertussis frenzy, 91% with documented pertussis were fully vaccinated. So the majority of people that got it were fully vaccinated and that came from the Flathead Health Department statistics. With this failure rate, does anybody think they'll do any better with the Ebola, Zika, and coronavirus vaccines? Other accomplishments of the pandemic sensationalism, attention has been diverted from meaningful events and actions we could be taking. People have become conditioned to fear-mongering and dependence on the alliance between government and the vaccine vaccine industry to save us. The, I'm gonna end with the recommendations of the American College of Physicians. Note, it is the government and the media promoting the sensationalism, not physicians or physicians organizations. 
The American College of Physicians says the U.S. is at very low risk of a coronavirus pandemic, and their recommendations are simple, probably already known to you, and have primarily to do with reducing the risk of viral transmission. These are what they have. To avoid infection, one, avoid people who are sick with respiratory illness, especially involving fever. Stay home if you're sick with fever. If you are sick, wash your hands frequently for at least 20 seconds. If you are sick, avoid touching eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Number four, don't wear masks unless you have a particular indication as, such as symptoms of a viral syndrome. Masks are incubators for germs if they're used improperly. Number five, cover your mouth or sneeze with a tissue and dispose of that tissue immediately. Number six, avoid unnecessary travel to China. If you gotta go, you gotta go. But above all, I recommend to you all, the same thing I recommended to the health department of which I'm a member, remain calm and informed amid the sensational hype put forth by the media regarding coronavirus and also get plenty of rest, fluids, and healthy whole foods. Thank you.